Hey friends, welcome back to my channel where this is the inaugural video of my new series, Week of Palette. Now, the idea of this series is that every eyeshadow look I post within this full week is going to be from one palette. And this week, I'm going to start with a palette which was gifted to me by a very kind subscriber. It is the Wahala 2 palette. So this is eye look number one using Wahala 2. The goal of this series is really to force myself to be creative with the palettes that I have and also possibly to inspire you guys. If you find that you have this palette and you haven't used it in a while, maybe I could give you some new ideas. I don't know. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. Hi. I'm a homeschooling stay-at-home mom. I love to play with eyeshadow, especially colorful eyeshadow, and I upload several videos every week. It's all eyeshadow-related stuff. So if you want to see more, I do hope that you'll consider subscribing. Okay, guys, so let's have a quick look at this Wahala 2 palette. I'm going to give you a little bit of a close-up. This palette is a little interesting to me because these two rows here, um, they look to be really blue and, like, pretty well blue-heavy, right? But they're actually are a lot of tones in here that are more periwinkle. So I'm looking forward to swatching them out and seeing what the colors truly are on the skin because sometimes they differ from how they look in the pan. That can be a bit deceptive and a little bit tricky to plan your looks out, but swatching them ahead of time certainly helps. But today I wanna to play with the more orangey tones. I will be totally honest with you, I had halfway done this video, like talking and everything, and I hated the eye look. Now that doesn't usually happen. Usually I can sort of save it and be like, oh, this is okay. Maybe not my favorite, but it's okay. No, I hated it. I hated it. I wiped it off completely. So I'm starting again and hoping that my little one doesn't wake up. So I am going to take a different tack and hope that this goes better the second time through. First, I'm gonna prime my eyes using the Glam Light Icing Primer. I'm a little annoyed that I have to restart this video because I was talking about my husband being in school and how we're working on, um, like how we're scheduling things and working together and how I'm feeling about not having as much help around the house, things like that. And uh, I feel like I was actually communicating clearly to you, wh which doesn't always happen. Sometimes I feel more like I've been rambling or I say, um, or ah, or I have all these awkward pauses and it's just a little bit less clear, but I thought I felt like this time was clear and now I have to redo it. <laughs> uh, say la vie. Okay, let's get going because my little one um, is still sleeping and I don't know how long that'll last. I want to take the shade ASAP with a medium and round blending brush. The toddler was febrile all last night, the poor little thing. And you know when you're feeling sick, especially if you have a fever or the flu or something, you know, you feel like your muscles just can't quite settle and so you you find yourself twitching and shifting back and forth a lot that's what she was doing all night so even when we were trying to comfort or cuddle her she would just shift and move around and kick her legs and she just could not get comfortable and I felt bad for her we went to bed early we were in bed before nine I think and unfortunately I spent until 1 a.m. sitting in bed with her while she because she would lay in her crib and she'd fuss and my dog. She would lay in her bed and she would fuss and twitch and move around and just could not settle with the constant <coughs> <coughs> noises because she's, you know, she's not feeling well. She's a bit congested and she's got a fever. And so I would, I would get her and try to comfort her and snuggle her and cuddle her. And the only way that she found to be comfortable was me sitting in bed and she lay with her head sort of hanging out of the crook of my arm and her body all splayed out and then she'd fall asleep. And if I moved, she would wake up because she wasn't sleeping deeply. So anytime I tried to shift or move or get comfortable myself, she would wake up and restart the process. So I got to the point where I'm like, I'm just not gonna move. With a pinched and smaller blending brush, now I'm taking the shade Wasted, which is an orange matte. And I wanna see if I can blend this purpley tone out a little bit. They don't really go together. Before, in my, my first attempt, I had Wasted first and then I tried to deepen it with this dark ASAP color and that didn't work at all. But I'm thinking it might work if I use the lighter tone to blend out the darker tone and bring in some of the orange. It does seem to be working a bit better. Anyway, so the little one did not sleep well and I did not sleep well and uh, she's still sleeping. I'm hoping that she gets a really good rest so that she can wake up feeling better. But I wanted to talk to you guys about my husband being in school and his schedule and how it has affected mine in a way that I kind of expected, but didn't really think all the way through. 
now that he's in school, all of his free time is spent doing school things. He wakes up around four or five and studies for a couple of hours before going to work, working the whole day, and then he comes home and studies the rest of the evening, you know, with a break for dinner and whatnot. Sometimes I'll play with the girls for a little while, but that's his life now. And I'm proud of him and I'm rooting for him. I know he's going to do great. The way it has affected me is, uh, well, a couple ways, actually. One of them is that he wants to go to bed with me. He always has wanted to go to bed together, and I'm not complaining about that. But he's going to bed at like eight or nine, <laughs> which is a little bit of a difficult thing for me to do, especially because I'm not getting up at four. If I were getting up at four, that would be no problem, but I'm not. And I think part of that is the pregnancy that I found myself sleeping till seven or so. Unless I set an alarm, I can definitely sleep later if I don't set an alarm. But um, it would behoove me to go to bed early with him and get up early with him. Because I am discovering now, particularly that he studies in the evenings, he doesn't have the time to help me with the children the way that he used to. And so if I need a break... Like, I'll give you an example. It used to be that I could say, hey, babe, I need a break. You know, I'm, I'm home with the kids all day. I'm homeschooling. I'm dealing with the house stuff. I just need a break. And he would say, okay. So, like, he has a men's study that he attends on Saturday mornings. But then he'd come home, and I would leave right away. Like, maybe I'll put the little one down for a nap or whatever. But he would take the girls, and I would go to a coffee shop for the rest of the morning. And it was just this beautiful respite. Like, I can go off and have some time to myself. I can do what I want, whether that's edit a video or bring some sewing with me or bring a book with me or a letter to my sister, whatever I want to do. I can go and I can enjoy some delicious coffee or tea or chocolate drink and do what I want to do. And it fed my soul. I don't have that now because now he goes to the men's thing on Saturdays and then he comes home and he studies. And all of his time at home now is spent studying, which I understand. He has eight hours of class time to watch each week because two of his classes are six are each three hours and one class is two. Okay, this is looking a lot better. Oh my goodness. I was really like, this is not working before. <laughs> so he has to watch eight hours of class time and lecture time. Then he has homework on top of that. And each class is requiring several books to be read during this semester. So he's got, I mean, probably approximately seven to 10 books that he has to read. And I'm filming this, you guys are going to see it later, but I'm filming it um, October 3rd, I think. And so we're going into his fall break week, which is good because he he's not behind, but he has time to now to finish reading what he needs to read and start getting a little bit ahead. But now he no longer is able to help me in the way that he was. And so it would behoove me, again, to go to bed early with him because then I can get up early with him and have those early morning hours before the children wake up to do what I want to do whatever that may be. And I'm still very much in the mindset of I stay up late because the kids are finally sleeping and now I have time to myself. But that's not actually good for you. You know, you get your best sleep before midnight is what I've heard. Not to mention my hobbies all involve clear eye-hand coordination. And you don't have that at nighttime. At nighttime you're tired. My eyes are tired. My hands are tired. I paint and I sew and I need to be able to do a good job in small precise work. But I, I can't do that when my body is tired. And so, again, it would be good for me to go to bed early, wake up early, and have several hours of fresh morning time to do what I want to do before kids need me. So I have to retrain my brain to that space. It's not there yet. So the shade that I wanted to use in this palette is called 419. It is a pressed glitter. Now, there are four pressed glitters in this palette, and they're kind of weird. This one and this one are really, really chunky, like BH Cosmetics birthstone glitters. They're just not good. This one seems to be in more of a gel suspension, so it was a lot smoother and creamier. Still glitter, though. And this is the one that I tried already this morning, and it was deceptive because on my finger, it looked a little smoother, creamier, more finely milled, but then I put it on my eye. I'm like, ah, abort. No. So I'm not going to use that now. Now, I guess I'm going to use this shade here called um, Periot. And I actually have to look it up because I'm like, I'm, it's obvious not Peridot because it's not green, right? They wouldn't name an orangey, purpley sort of shimmer Peridot, would they? 
And then I thought, it's probably not a misspelling. I assume that there's someone copy editing these palettes before they're launched. So I looked it up and apparently it is more urban dictionary slang sort of thing for period, except with a T sound instead of a D sound. So, you know, end of sentence, end of discussion, period, like that. You probably say it with more sass. But anyway, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna use that shade because none of the other ones I think would really work with today's look. So I'm gonna take a flat C or shader brush. I've sprayed the shade and I'm gonna lay it in the center of my lid space. I really wanna see how light of a tone it is because I don't like a dark shimmer to go all the way to the inner corner. This is pretty. Okay, it's a little bit lighter than I thought. So that's where we are now where he, he works and he's not able to help me in the way that he was before. It's not that he doesn't try. I'm just finding like I was expecting this intellectually but to to now live it out is a little bit of a different experience and it's just a matter of getting used to something new and something else I've noticed is that I do struggle a bit with selfishness as far as I want my time to do my things when I want and that's not exactly healthy <laughs> selfishness is not healthy for any of us it's also not very realistic given the fact that I am soon to be a mother of three. I've definitely gotten a little bit more selfish in recent years with my older daughter getting older because I can send her upstairs to get a shower and she doesn't need supervision anymore. I can trust her to make lunch and she doesn't need my help. And so her independence has given me this renewed taste of me time. But now I'm back to the beginning with little ones and Little ones take your me time <laughs> in unexpected ways. Like last night, it may, maybe I could have gotten up at four o'clock this morning if I had slept the whole night, but I was up until one. And so even if everything had worked out and I, I could have used that early morning chunk of time as me time, she was interrupting it with her needs. And she's a baby, you know, that's, that's hello parenthood. That's part of being a parent. New shifts and changes happening in our lives that I need to work through. I need to get my head around and I need to do so quickly because people need me and it is not helpful to them if I'm being selfish. I think I'm gonna spice this look up a little bit with a pop of color on the lower lash line. I'm kind of looking at this row of aqua tones and I think I wanna grab the shade Lust. So I'm taking that on a smaller blending or pencil brush and I'm gonna run that. I'm gonna start it in my outer corner and see how it looks. I'm really excited by the, this row in the palette. I think these tones are super pretty and cannot wait to play with them a bit more. Oh, now, see, didn't that make the look a whole lot more interesting right off the bat? It's like, hello, I wasn't expecting that to be there. Take a smaller pencil brush. I'm going to use as an inner corner highlight the shade Shakara. There's a whole row of silver shimmers and I think they're all pretty similar, actually. I, I feel like we could have gotten rid of two of them and done other things. They're all pretty cool tones. Shakara seems like maybe the least cool tone of all the cool toned silver shimmers. I'm going to spray my brush. I'm going to use this as an inner corner highlight and also run it into that green on the lower lash line. And I think I'll take whatever's left of my brush just for kicks and run that up here as a brow highlight just a little bit. I haven't done a brow highlight in ages. <laughs> okay, this is a weird look. It's all these warm tones on the lid and then cool tones in the inner corner and lower lash line. I think it's fun though. I think it certainly is more interesting than it was before I did the lower lash line. So now let me grab, I've got this dark green eyeliner from ColourPop. This is the shade Canopy. It is from their Lush Life collection. I wish I had a true turquoise liner, but I don't. So I'll just use this dark green because it's gonna be close enough and keep the cohesion of the lower lash line. Okay, this is how it's gonna end up looking. I'm gonna go off camera and finish up and then I'll be back and uh, close out this video with you. All right, here is how it all turned out. What do you think? I am liking it so much more since I finished the lower lash line. I think that makes kind of an average everyday boring sort of look a lot more interesting. And I really like it a lot more now. I did a winged eyeliner. Um, on my lips, I am wearing, what is this? The NYX Butter Gloss in the shade bit of honey. I bought a couple more of these in different tones. I wanted, I got like a purpley, like a deeper burgundy tone. I got this one, which I wanted to be more neutral brown leaning for when I do those kinds of looks. And, and then I got another one that's a little bit more lavendery. So hopefully that rounds out my collection a bit more. And then I am wearing 
actually two things. Now, I think I'm gonna post this video after the one about putting on a bronzer, <laughs> which was a little bit entertaining. Um, but I discovered that the bronzer I used is probably not quite the right tone for me because it's more warm toned and I have cool undertones. So I needed more of a cool toned bronzer. And so I thought I could use this as a bronzer perhaps. This is the Milan Mulan ColourPop blush in the shade Matchmaker. And I mentioned this in my bronzer video. It's a little bit darker than my skin tone, so I thought that might work as a bronzer. I'm not sure. And then I also do have a different, sorry, a different bronzer in my collection that's a baked bronzer from Physician's Formula, I think. Bronzer booster, I don't know, in the shade light to medium. So I don't know. I'm gonna use what I have and try to try to get the, the bronzer look and also play with the more warm tone things and see if I can find a happy medium. But then on my as a highlight, I'm using the Nomad um, Around the World color in the shade Positano Sunrise, which is a beautiful highlighter. This was also gifted to me by that subscriber who sent me a box of goodies, and so I'm just having fun playing with everything. So there you go. That's the whole look, and I think it's pretty. Again, I'm really glad I did the lower lash line because I was quite bored with the look before I did that, but now I like it. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you for hanging out with me, for giving me a bit of your time. I hope you liked it. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and until I see you next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye!